Hey, how's it going guys? In today's video, we're going to be playing a live rapid game, as you can see, on leechess.org. And we're playing at a pretty high level, like 2200-ish. Um, that's not exactly equivalent to chess.com rating, that's like more like 2000, maybe a little bit higher on chess.com. That's the kind of equivalent. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be talking you through my thought process while we play. Hopefully you find it useful, instructive and maybe even entertaining <laughs> um, and if you do please drop a like and subscribe I'd really appreciate it and I play the A3 Sicilian because we are able to play this really cool gambit line that Gotham Chess recommends and I've had so much success with it here we're gonna pre-move um, well pawn takes d5 because d5 is a typical move here now the reason you play this gambit is because you kind of bait the knight over to b5 so that you can play c3 and when the knight retreats you can play d4 and you get this massive pawn center for the loss of a flank pawn. Um, it's like your opponent loses a c pawn, you lose your a and b pawns. But your a and b pawns aren't really that important. It gives options for like the bishop to come to a3 because these pawns are removed. It also gives the rook the open A file to target the A7 pawn. So in a lot of variations, A6 gets played to stop a piece from coming to B5. But it doesn't stop the piece from coming to B5 at all because my rook is open. And in a lot of cases, pin... I don't know why my arrows are being so weird. In a lot of cases, pins the A pawn so that it can't take on B5 if it's advanced to A6. So it's a really good opening. There's a lot of trap like trappy lines in it but even if you don't get a trap like your opponent doesn't fall for a trap that you can just memorize and play out exactly as recommended like you can still get a very nice position and here the opponent doesn't play the committal d5 in which case it goes to into like a complicated trappy line he plays d6 and so there isn't an immediate follow-up I don't know whether d5 works here, like d5, knight to e5, f4, knight to g6, h4, looking for h5, to attack the knight, then e6, attacks my d5 pawn and gives the knight an escape square to e7, so after h5, knight e7, I'm not sure I'm convinced. I'm not sure. So there's no need to go for that necessarily. We could start with f4 though, because f4 threatens e5. Sorry, d5, because the knight won't have the e5 square. So I think I'm going to do that. Just get an absolutely huge pawn center. This is also good because if the opponent goes for e5 at some point, like pawn e5, we can exchange the f pawn and when the d pawn takes back we can play d5 ourselves and get a pass d pawn which would be protected by our pawn on e4 again i have no idea why it's not letting me draw arrows um i'm really not sure so hopefully you can follow along with the coordinates if you can't like if i'm saying all these words and you're like bro what where is e5 just pause it figure it out, play it on your own board if you want to, but you should be able to follow along if you do that. So here, like I said, e5, I thought we could meet it with f takes e5, d takes e5, and d5 attacking the knight and getting a protected pass pawn. It does look very tempting. I think I'm going to go for it. Oh, did we just blunder queen to h4? think I did. So I think I'm going to have to play knight to f3 to stop the queen from coming to h4. I think I just fully, fully blundered that. Queen h4 check. And if I go g3, he just takes on e4 and forks the king in the rook. I think that works. Queen h4. Would I have to play like... <sighs> 
Yeah, no, I think that was just losing. Our opponent doesn't see it though, so that's great. <laughs> 20, 2200's missed this kind of thing. Um, bro just tunnel visioned a little bit. I would have loved to play d5 immediately, like I say, but queen to h5 would have ruined my position entirely. Okay, so knight f6. Of course we can take on e5 and win a pawn, but then our opponent trades queens with us and it's it's not great. So I think pawn d5 here makes sense, especially because the knight can't come to d4. So I think I'm going to do that. Now we have a protected pass pawn. This knight is putting pressure on e4, but we can defend it in numerous ways. I think knight d2 makes the most sense. The e5 pawn is also going to hang once the knight retreats. Oh, to b8. Okay. I don't think taking here is great, though. I don't think it makes much sense, because he's just going to take on e4. And the e5 pawn is going to be very weak. Our e4 pawn can't be attacked more than once, really. So if we just go knight to d2, then the e4 pawn is very well secured. Yeah, bishop d6 defends e5. I'm thinking of ideas of like c4 to play c5 to try and get d6 in. We also have bishop to a3 like I mentioned earlier. Although bishop a3, castle. If I take, he just replaces the bishop with the queen who does a good job of defending. So I think I want to start with bishop d3. Because bishop d3, I can castle, which is good. But I can also play knight to c4, attacking the bishop and the e5 pawn. And if I go knight c4, I'm threatening to take the bishop. And after queen takes, play qu bishop to a3, skewering the bishop. and Well, the, a, a queen will be there. And it will skewer the queen and the rook. And I'll win the exchange. So knight c4 I think is a great move. I think it's a no-brainer. And I'm also putting a lot of pressure on e5 with both of my knights. You could play rook to e8. Which would defend the pawn. And get the rook off of the skewering diagonal. So I think that's... That would be the most logical move here. Even then, we can maybe just castle, or we can play bishop to g5, because this knight is really horribly pinned to the queen. Although then knight bd7 defends the knight, but would lose the bishop. So maybe that's the way to go, to pin the knight, because we know that he can't play knight bd7, because the bishop will hang. Maybe that's a good strategy. Um, so rook e8 is what we're expecting, because it defends e5, there we go, and gets off of the a3 to f8 diagonal. Taking the bishop, I think, would be a bad move. Our knight's really strong. We can wait for a move like b5 even, trying to kick our knight out before we take. We could castle. We could castle, but then h6 stops our bishop from getting out. Is that a bad thing? Is that so bad? Hmm. We could even play a move like queen b3, just put in pressure on b7, stop the bishop developing. But then maybe queen c7? I do like bishop g5. I think this diagonal is no longer very important because the rook stepped off of it. So bishop g5 I really like. And if he plays h6, if he plays h6, we're going to retreat to h4. And if he lunges out with g5, we can either come to g3 to pressure e5, or all the way to f2, because this is a weak diagonal in our position. So our bishop could do a good defensive job there. 
knight g4 could attack the bishop, which is kind of annoying, but I feel like his king side would be too weak with these moves being played. If he doesn't do anything, then we can probably castle. Yeah, a a6 doesn't do anything. I, I really don't understand what it does. If he's preparing b5, then he's wasted a whole two moves preparing that. And I'm just going to take the bishop anyway. So I think castling makes sense here. I think we can just castle and get pressure on that f6 knight with the rook. Not immediately, but it will like um, put pressure on f6 once the knight moves. We can maybe set up some discoveries. I think it's a logical move. I, I don't see how it can be bad. We're not going to think too hard about it. We're just going to play it. We're just going to play it. Any check on this diagonal doesn't really do anything. Queen b6 isn't possible because the knight defends that. Bishop c5 doesn't really do anything. Okay, yeah, he plays this, but when I take this bishop... Now, if I go bishop to b5 thinking I'm smart, because like I mentioned, the reason the rook is good on the a-file is because it pins the pawn to the rook. But he does have queen b6 or queen c5 with a check and attacking the bishop. So that doesn't work. But if we just go king h1, step out of any pins, his knight can move, like his f6 knight can move. He can also play knight bd7. But once we play this, we are actually threatening the b5 pawn. Because he has no check to attack the bishop. And the king at the same time with so he's got to address this problem a move like bishop b7 would work because it would defend the rook um a move like bishop d7 would defend the pawn but it would take away the knight's developing square bishop b7 also kind of just runs into my d5 pawn there might be a potential sacrifice though and following it up with a fork of my minor pieces. But I think rook e1 stops that. Because if the pawn takes either piece, the rook will be hanging. Because this knight is gone. And so no longer defends the rook. So that's a solid move. Makes sense. But does it not just hang b5? Well, if we take b5, then knight takes e4 can be played. I don't think we want to allow that. We could take here first. Um, I don't really want to. We're the only one with a dark squared bishop. We could even play knight to h4 to go to f5 and attack the queen get the knight on a more aggressive square. That looks very nice. Um, I think our knight isn't really doing anything right now. Our bishop is just holding our position together. This bishop's putting pressure on. If we play knight h4, the rook also then gets into the game a bit more. We need to try and get our queen involved. I think knight h4 is good. If he plays a move like f6 to stop that, then his dark squares are just way too weak. Wow, no, he can't play that. There's no way he can play that. Look at his dark squares. What about queen f3? Just attacking the knight. Queen f3, king g7 defending. Maybe rook a2 to go to f2? Okay, we're going to play it. I think it's an obvious move. h6 can now not be played to attack the bishop because there's no g-pawn to defend it. If king g7 is played, there will be a piece defending it. But I'm not sure this... I just don't believe this works. We 
can also just take on b5 now, because e4 doesn't hang anymore. Can we play knight f5 check? Do we have that? Pawn takes... Don't think so. Don't think it works. Rook a2, h6. If we take the knight, then he can take with the queen. And then... If we exchange the queens, oh, I don't want to exchange the queens though. Like I said, we could just take on b5. I actually think that's a good move because this knight's now pinned to the rook and we're attacking this knight, which is a key defender of this knight. So if things get exchanged on this square, then this rook will hang. So I think, I think that works. Because this knight can no longer take on e4 because our queen is defending it, which is why we couldn't take earlier. Wow, this is a really complicated game. I hope my explanations are making sense to you guys. Okay, rook f8, logical, defends f7, gets out with the pin. Now, if we take the knight, we take the knight, he has to take back with the knight. My opponent offers a draw for some reason. I'm not accepting that. Bishop takes knight, knight takes knight. I think that's the move. Knight takes knight, then what's the follow up? What's the follow up? I, I want knight f5 to work to open the g file. I don't think it does. What am I missing? What about queen here threatening bishop there? Let's play it. It's a quick and easy move to play. It's difficult to handle actually. I want to double the rooks up on the f file as well. Maybe bring a rook to g3 or to h3. So I think our next move is rook f3. I'm low time now, so I need to play a bit quicker. That can't be right. That can't be right. But maybe it's the only way for him to get out of the... Okay, we're going to play this. There's no need to play push up h6 yet. I can play that at any time. I don't see a rush. Sorry, a need to rush. If we double the rooks... Or if we swing this rook over to one of these squares. Rook here threatens knight f5. Okay, let's give it a check. Whoa. Okay. Let's double up. He can't. He can't do that. He can't do that. Knight takes here, queen takes. The knight's overloaded. The knight's defending too many things. Um, check. Take the knight. Take the queen. Boom. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened to the headset there. It just disconnected for a second. But that is very, very nice. Because after the bishop takes, we take the queen. And we're up a queen. I am so happy with that attack.
that was awesome. Um, yeah, here I've got a better position. Like I said, I did not think that g6 was playable because queen f3, we forced the king up. Taking on b5 was the best. And after the rook moves, bishop c6 was apparently better. But taking the knight is just as good, really. Does it like queen e3? It does. It's its second favorite move. Rook e8. Here, here, here. What did it want? Rook f1. And after takes, we just infiltrate. Okay. It's not obvious why white's winning though, so I don't mind bishop h6. I, I don't understand why c4 is the move, but yeah, the the queen c5 move just misses a tactic because knight takes, queen takes. So after king here, we give a check. And then, yeah, we just remove the defender of the queen with check. Once bishop g5 here, and if this is, if the he takes the queen, rook e6 is double checkmate, which is pretty cool. But it doesn't really matter because we win regardless. I'm very happy with that. If you guys stuck around to the end of the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed and have a good one.